topic that just struck my mind is that it uses the phrase post COVID-19. Even though I feel like the topic can be refined and we can say during COVID-19 because COVID-19 is not going to go away as fast as we're going to open up our brick and mortar industry. You know, both these things will have to run parallelly and we will have to learn how to keep the brick and mortar industry going and manage with COVID-19 at the same time. So with that perspective, I've created this short presentation that I would like to share with all of you. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about the where the retail industry is right now is brace for impact. Now, I know this is a really negative statement and, you know, it's normally said in aircrafts before something really bad is going to happen. The pilot yells, you know, brace for impact uh, just right before the aircraft is about to crash. So I think in the industry, we're somewhere around at this point where there are so many uncertainties that we don't really know what's going to happen going ahead in the future. The most obvious uncertainty is that we don't know when and how these establishments are going to open up. Uh, some state governments and the central government have issued certain guidelines about how many people are allowed in the store, sanitizations, masks, but we're yet to see how big brands adopt these into their strategies and how they go along with it. So that's one uncertainty that still remains in my mind. The second thing uh, which comes to my mind is that once we open up these establishments, will people actually be willing to go back? You know, will you, be, will you feel safe to enter a, a clothing brand again and touch clothes and feel clothes and you know, try on clothes or go to a makeup shop and try on makeup? We don't know that yet. You know, we, it's, we're yet to see how the public perceives the threat of this virus and will they be comfortable in going to the retail stores again or not? The third thing that comes to my mind is that will our supply chains ever go back to the pre-COVID levels? As we all know, right, uh, apparel and electronics and all of these things come from China. And if I go to a store right now and uh, I say I'm on this laptop and the store, on, the store says that, you know, it's not in stock, that is a really bad thing to happen right now because I think physical stores need to do all they can to stop me from going online and searching for something. So it is really crucial to get the supply chains back in line before we can, you know, truly open up the retail industry again. Now, going on to a more positive note, right? Uh, I want to say that the second thought that, that comes to my mind is that each crisis presents in itself an opportunity that we should uh, use. I'm going to give you a short example. Uh, in 07 and 08, when the global financial meltdown happened, companies realized that they were giving out these standard credit terms where if I would sell you a good, the payment would come back after uh, 80 days, 180 days, 200 days. And this was considered normal until the 07 and 08 crisis happened and companies failed to meet their commitments. So people realized that these standard credit terms were no longer acceptable. And, uh, you know, the, the norms changed, the standards changed. And all of this led to something, a, 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 more, a, a more robust commercial infrastructure. You know, similarly, a lot of legislation came into place about what bankers could or could not do. So a lot of positivities came out of uh, the 07 and 08 crisis. Similarly, I think that the brick and mortar industry can really extract a lot of positivities out of this current crisis. You know, even before this crisis came, all of us were already talking about what's the future of retail. You know, will e-commerce take over the world and, you know, how are physical stores going to survive? So I think this crisis is really a turning point in uh, brick and mortar. They can really leverage this crisis to do something great. And they, I believe that they can bring out something that they have, the physical, the fact that they hold a physical space, they can leverage that to beat the e-commerce. So, you know, one thing that comes to my mind when I think about physical retail is that I used to be a web developer at some point in time. And I know that, you know, what all you can do with a web page, you can, you can make the fonts bigger, smaller, you can put videos, you can put all, you, you know, you can really make a web page interactive, but there's a, a hell lot more that you can do with a physical space. And that difference, right? That Delta that brands can do with the physical space is what's going to be essential to get the customer back into the physical store. Because if a brand gives me exactly the same service that I get on Flipkart, I'm not going to go to the brand to, to, to buy a shirt. I'm just going to open Flipkart, buy the shirt and check out and get it delivered to my house. So brands 
have to leverage what the e-commerce platforms could not do now more than ever in the physical stores. You know, this has already been going on for a long time, but I think this crisis is the turning point where brands who are able to demonstrate this are really going to come out as winners. Um, to go a little bit deeper into the topic, uh, I'm going to talk about visual merchandising. Uh, what visual merchandising is in simple words is basically the look and feel of a brand. So let's say when you walk into an Adidas, right? You see the walls are for specific color, the store is a specific layout, shoes are at one end, the clothes are at one end, you know, the changing room is at one end, the checkout is at one end. So all of these, all the look, the look and feel of a brand, they all compromise and create what we call visual merchandising. The VM or visual merchandising has essentially four elements, which is the exterior of the store, you know, how the signage looks, how the entry is, how the store window is, the layout of the store, which is how things are laid, laid out. Where is the checkout? Where are the clothes? Where are the shoes? Uh, you know, how people move around the store. Uh, then the interior of the store, which is the permanent structure. You know, some brands choose some curved walls or, you know, some interesting ceiling concepts that we, we, we do. Uh, the, the permanent fixtures inside the store. And the last concept is the interior display that we see, which means 60% off, 40% off, you know, a big LCD screen. So all of these things come together and create what we call VM. Now from a COVID point of view, right? I think VM is going to be really critical in bringing the customers back to the store because VM is that one tool which can make the customer feel safe inside a brand. You know, if, 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 if a store does good VM, you can feel, okay, you know, this store is safe. I can go there. I may not get infected. They do, they do, they have sanitizers and they do regular cleaning. So VM is going to be really important for physical establishments. You know, if we, if we were to all ask, ask ourselves this question that when the store near my house opens up, will I go to the store? You know, will I be comfortable in touching around things and moving around the store in coming with close proximity to customers? Uh, we can all ask ourselves this question and that will give us a good hint of what the future holds. We'll all have different answers, of course. But it's, it's good to keep this in mind about how you would react when I go ahead with the presentation, because a lot of things are determined by the individual customer and the customers come together and make the market. So what we all think individually is really important. So the first and the most obvious thing that I'm sure all of you have guessed is sanitization, sanitization, sanitization. I cannot stress on this more. Uh, hand sanitizers are going to become the new norm for all retail establishments. You're going to walk in, you're going to have a station at the entrance, a station in the, in the middle, a station outside the restrooms. If there's a water area, there's going to be a station near the water area. Wherever you can touch and feel things, there are going to be sanitizer stations. Uh, one quick video that I want to shoot to all of you is what my company has developed that we call Yes Talk. Uh, it's essentially a sanitizer dispenser, but we realize that brands don't just want to put a sanitizer bottle and be done with it. If they're going to put something, they want to use that space as branding opportunity because